Hello and welcome to a new video about standard element in control engineering. Remember this element? PT1 element. Yeah. I'll put it again here. The PT1 element we use quite often up to now. Yeah. What, what, is it, what was it good for? It was good to be combined with the D element. From the D element and the PT1 element we derived the TT1 element. Okay. It was good to be used with the PD element. The PD element and the PT1 element together build the PTT1 element. So what we're trying today now is to combine it with the I element. The big question now is, how is an I element combined with a PT1 element called? Well, IT1 element. Okay. So today we're going to talk about an IT1 element. IT1 element. This is a pretty important element uh, because it is uh, because it is simply used in in or desired often in in the open control loop transfer. We will see because if we're talking about stability, this is something we want to have. Why? We will see. Oh. So IT1 element. It's a combination of two elements, like I said. There is the I element and there's the PT1 element. Pretty much the same I, PT1. There is an input into those elements. And the output of the I element will be transferred to the PT1 element, and then there is the output of the IT1 element. Okay, so here we have our XI from S. Here we have our XO from S. Okay. Now let's remember the transfer functions. Let's remember the transfer function of the I element. What was it? Here. Yeah. This was the transfer function of the I element, 1 divided by SD. Mm -hmm. So here, this G I from S is 1 divided by S, and I will call it T1, because it's simply the first element. Yeah. And here, the transfer function of the PT1 element looks like this. Yeah. Looks like this. K divided by 1 plus ST. So, gt from s is k divided by 1 plus s, and I call it t2, simply to, be, to distinguish between the two t's here. What does it mean for our total transfer function? Our total transfer function, g from s, is this gi from s multiplied by this gt from s. So it is 1 divided by st1 multiplied by k divided 1 plus st2. What is actually k divided by st1 multiplied 1 plus st2. And now this thing here, this here. k is a constant, t1 is a constant, this is also constant, yeah? and I will combine those two. Yeah? I will call it tn. Yeah? So I will say my gs is actually 1 divided s ti, I will call it ti. Yeah? 1 plus st2. Yeah? With ti equals T1 divided by K. Okay. Then I get rid of this K, and this is the transfer function of an IT1 element. Transfer function of an IT1 element. How does it look like for the frequency response? We will simply replace all S's with J omega, so it's J omega Ti, 1 plus J omega T2. Okay. 
let's again think what it means for the absolute value. The absolute value of j omega is 1 divided by this absolute value omega ti multiplied by this absolute value square root 1 plus omega t2 squared. Okay. And the argument is the argument of this, this part, this is minus 90 degree, yeah, because actually it's minus 1 divided by, minus j 1 divided by omega t1, ti, yeah, so it's minus 90, I will draw it afterwards, minus 90 and then minus this one, yeah? so it's minus arcus tangens from uh, imaginary part divided by real part, omega t2 divided by 1 is omega t2 only. Okay. So these are the two things. I will try to show it also in the graph. Imaginary axis, real axis. Okay. Let's talk about this part here. J omega ti. Yeah. J omega ti looks like this. Here, this is omega ti. Okay. And then this part here, 1 plus J omega t2, 1, and then the length here is omega t2. And it looks like this. This is this is this part. In reality, it is minus 90 degree because in reality we will look down. And also here we'll just mirror mirror because it's a division. So it will it will look down in the in the argument. So here this is minus 90 actually, yeah, and this is minus arcus tangens omega t2 divided by 1. Yeah? This is this angle. What does it mean if we go to the extremes? Yeah? So at omega equals 0 and omega equals infinity. Yeah? What does it mean for our absolute value and the argument? The absolute value is if we put in here zero. Uh, if we put in here zero, uh, this will this will be zero. One plus zero is one. One multiplied by zero is zero. One divided by zero. Extremely big. Okay. And now infinity. Yeah. 1 plus infinity squared is, let's say, infinity squared. Yeah. Square root is infinity multiplied by infinity is infinity squared. 1 divided by something really, 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 really big yeah, squared is 0. Yeah. So the absolute value of g in infinity is 0. This looks like an i element here. We had the same values there. What does it mean here uh, in the argument? The argument at frequency 0 is minus 90, minus, and here with 0, 0. Uh, it's clear because this minus 90 I cannot get rid of. And if this is 0, yeah, we will have no angle left. Okay, So it's simply minus 90 degree. Well, this looks, it's also like in the i element. Huh? And here argument at unlimited is, look at this, yeah? here minus 90 degree, here if this is growing, cook, 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 
it will also add 90 degree. So 2 times 90 degree and division by it, we will end up at minus 180 degree. So this was the mathematical description of the IT1 element. Mathematical description of the IT1 element. And now, like always, we want to have a look how it looks in the Bode plot and the step response. Yeah? So I'm writing here, we are looking at the IT1 element. Let's copy the transfer function. So the transfer function here, g from s equals 1 divided by sti 1 plus st2. Yeah. This means in the frequency response j omega 1 divided by j omega ti 1 plus s, not j omega of course, <laughs> t2, s. There's no s. s is replaced by j omega. Okay, so in the absolute value then equals 1 divided by omega ti square root 1 plus omega t2 squared and the argument is minus 90 degree minus arcus tangens from omega t2. We had this here. This is the, these are the values. Okay, now let's think again what we, what we are combining here. We are combining a PT1 element and we with an I element. So actually, we can think about this in the step response. Looking at the step response of the I element. This was the step response of the I element, remember. Okay? Looking at the step response of the I element, it would look like this. Here we have zero. Starting from here, we start to grow and we are growing constantly. Okay? This is the I part. I element part. And now this is fed into a PT1 element. Okay? And the PT1 element, you know, the element is stupid. It does not know it will grow. The input will grow. How should it? So for the from the IT1, for the PT1 element, it looks always like you can imagine like infinitesimal small jumps. Huh? And not every jump it is reacting like a PT1 element. And so all the jump responses are adding up simply. The result will be that here, after a while, there is a parallel asymptotic line. Yeah? And if this is the input of a PT1 element, the output will look like this, that it will, first, there will be almost nothing, yeah? and then it will start to grow. And the further this is going up, it will grow more and more and more. And then, at that one point in time, it will grow in parallel. Huh? And this is exactly already the step response of an IT1 element. Here is nothing. Yeah? And then we will start to grow faster and faster until we have reached a final grow rate. And this final grow rate this is, here we can see this TI still, yeah? so this is the TI, yeah? and here, this here, this is actually this T2, this is, this is the value of the, of the PT1 part, yeah? and also here, add 1, here, we again have this TI. Yeah? This is how you could determine from a step response the two values T2 and TI. Yeah? Simply by using the asymptotes at the, at the recorded curve and 
that the mind is point, and then you can measure that. It's not that easy to do that. Okay, it's not that easy to do that. However, you could. Mm -hmm. So this is the step response. How do we look here? Let's also think about it as a combination. So actually, this here, this here is the I part. So G from J omega is 1 divided by J omega Ti, that's the I element, multiplied by 1 divided by 1 plus J omega T2. That's the PT1 element. So this is, this is how you could interpret this. Let's have a look at the PT1 element. Yeah. PT1 element, K1, so, so we are here at 1, yeah. and we will bend down at this T1, this omega G, this characteristic frequency. Yeah. This is 1 divided by T, and here we have 1 divided by T2. T2 in my case is 20. 1 divided by 20, 1 divided by 2 is a half, and 20, 0 .0 0 0.05. Yeah? So we had 0 0.05. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, here. Here would be the characteristic frequency 1. Oh, let's do it. Huh? This is 1 divided by T2. Huh? The starting Gain is 1, so we are here, and here we will start to fall. 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, here. This is this is the PT1 part, here. And here, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 0 dot 0, 5, because 20 seconds, we are at minus 45 degree, and then we are ending up somewhere at 90 degree. Yeah? So here it would look like this. Try to reach this symmetrical, and then we are ending up at 90 degree. Yeah? This is the PT1 part. And now to the I part. I part, where have it? Here. Here, this crossover frequency, omega d. Omega d was uh, 1 divided by ti, in our case. 1 divided by ti, ti was 10, 1 divided by 10 is 0, here we are here. Yeah. So this frequency, is 1 divided by Ti. This is the crossover frequency, and our I element would look like this. Here they are parallel, yeah? and the argument is always minus 90 degree. This is the I element argument. Wow, how is now the combination looking like? Up to this point, something multiplied by 1 is the same something. So we are, we are going down here. And starting at this characteristic frequency, yeah, this cutoff frequency of the PT1 element, we will drop twice. Yeah? So this means, if we are dropping twice, if we have 10 times the frequency, we have hundreds, only factor 100 lower output. Yeah? So, because 1 divided by 10 multiplied by 1 divided by 10 is 1 divided by 100. So, we are not ending up, ending up here. Yeah? We are ending up even lower. So, it will look like this. We will drop here very fast. And there is then also transition. So, we will go down here. 
then around this, this cutoff frequency we will be factor square root of 2 below and here we are really dropping. Okay. That's the behavior of an IT1 element. So it's from steep to steeper, switching from steep to steeper at exactly the, at exactly the frequency which is added by the PT2, a PT1 element. And how does it look like here? Yeah, well, we have just to add those two curves. So we will start here. Here we will be at minus 135 degree here. Yeah. And basically we are parallel to the curve of the PT1 element, but 90 degree below. Mm -hmm. See, just, just by thinking about how those two elements look combined, we have got the extreme values, values as well. So at frequency zero, we are at limited. At the frequency, high frequency, we are at zero. Okay. At low frequencies, we have minus 90 degree. But at high frequencies, we have minus 180 degree. Back. Everything fits together again. Yeah? Two approaches, two times the same result. This is how it should look like. IT1 element, next combined element. Like said, open, open loop transfer functions do sometimes have or very often have this behavior and it's not a too bad thing. We will talk about this. However, next time we are talking about something completely different. Yeah? Next time we are talking about an element which can not really be combined with this standard elements we know up to now. Yeah? Next time we are talking about a dead time element. Yeah? And a dead time element is really something annoying. Is really, really something annoying. Why we will also see when we're talking about stability. However, next time we are now talking about the dead time element. Will be done in the next video. For this time, thank you very much for listening. Goodbye.